Sleeper Wire, the only fantasy football radio show with more than a dozen multi-time, multi-league, multi-year champions. Listen to the Sleeper Wire show every Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Dash Talk. Welcome to the Sleep Wire Show. Today is November 14, 2017. I'm your host, Producer Steve, and with me today is Max and Professor Chris. Welcome, guys. Thanks for being on the show today. What up, hey, Thanks for having me. Right. Still working on that nickname, Steve. Yeah, we'll get we'll get you one next year. Don't worry, it'll come to me eventually. It'll come to me. It's eventually. only been it's only been three three years. <laughs> well, week ten, man, we saw some big name players not score you much in fantasy, and uh, we're going to talk about it today. We're going to go over all the games. We're going to look at some trends. We're going to kind of include the news and injuries in the recaps, so we can get right into the recaps. We're going to give you some outlook on these guys and their playoff schedules coming up for the fantasy playoffs that is and uh with that i said let's just get started all right real quick though we're going to talk about a couple pieces of news from teams that were on by this week because uh obviously they didn't have games the ravens specifically are not sure that danny woodhead will be ready to play in week 11 when he is back from the ir guys i know a lot of people were picking danny woodhead up off of waivers stashing him for the playoff push is this a concerning that he's not going to be able to play even though he's coming off IR? Or is this just them being cautious and trying to work him back in slowly? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah, I still I don't think, think he absolutely should be picked up even if he doesn't play this week. I agree with that, but I, I agree also with the first statement. You don't really want to rush players back in coming off the IR. so Especially that old. Exactly. Danny Woodhead does play the Browns and the Colts weeks 15 and 16. Ooh, that sounds juicy. All right, yeah. so Danny, take the time and get ready. Get better. Make sure you're full 100% good to go because we're going to need you down the stretch. The other uh, bit of news from a bye week team, Zach Ertz, uh, said he was a full go in Monday's practice, and I think we kind of expected him to get better. So that is, uh, that's good news, actually. So roll him out this week with confidence. Okay, let's jump into the Week 10 Game Recap. Okay, we're going to start with the Seahawks and the Cardinals. Seahawks won 22-16 Thursday night football game. I got I got to say, this, this stuff needs to go. It's not very good TV. The guys are getting injured on these short rest weeks. The ratings are down, and we saw it in this. Just a ton of injuries. Dwayne Brown got hurt in the game. Russell Wilson's back scrambling around like he always does. So that offensive line is back to being... Ugh. Uh, had a decent game, obviously, because he's Russell Wilson. Jimmy Graham was the beneficiary. Nice game from him. Uh, Baldwin also had a good game. But Thomas Rawls, all right, so he had the start to himself. Didn't do much. 10 carries for 27 yards. J.D. McKissick, though, 26 yards on five attempts, although most of it came on one run. So is this what the offense is just going to look like for the rest of the year? Just get used to it. No running game and just scrambling Russell Wilson, chucking the ball? Well, uh, it looks... It's looked yeah. like that so far. Yeah. I mean, they need to get Eddie Lacy back. He honestly, as much as people make fun of him, he's the best running back in that backfield right now. And on the Thursday night football comment, I think I said this in the chat with you guys, it should only be for teams coming off bye weeks. Like, it's, it's not fair to have someone play on a Sunday than go on Thursday. It was it's weird. just not. It was weird because uh, Sherman, who obviously got hurt in this game, he was kind of like predicting it. You know, he was talking about before – he doesn't like Thursday night games. He thinks they should be gone away with um, and wasn't feeling Doug Baldwin really good. was very vocal about it as well. Yeah. So, I mean, and then that, and that's a big loss for that defense. Uh, in terms of fantasy, though, if you start in the Seattle defense week to week, you were feeling good. Does this make you have a little pause starting them with no Richard Sherman? Not really. I'd still start him. I mean, Sherman's probably one of the best corners in the league, but Pete Carroll always has a – I mean, this year has been kind of rough for them, but Pete Carroll has been pretty good at plug and play. And uh, against the run, they're still going to be strong. In the secondary, even without Sherman, in my eyes, is still a top 10 secondary. All right. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's still a defense that you're going to play every single week. All righty. Uh, last quick question. If the uh, if Dwayne Brown doesn't come back healthy, are you feeling the Falcons' defense as a streamer for the uh, sack potential this next week here? 
Uh, I don't really know how much it's going to affect the game that's already, you know, what they already have in play. I still think the passing game is going to be strong. Russell Wilson's good enough at scrambling that. I'm not sure how much it's really going to hurt him. I mean, I wouldn't start a running. I wouldn't start any Seattle running backs. I do agree that Russell Wilson will get. Well, the Seahawks will probably win just because the Seahawks, some for some reason, figure out a way to do that against very good teams. Um, but I don't expect a huge passing game out of Russell Wilson. Uh, this is going to be much more of a scramble game, kind of what we've been seeing a lot of lately. Because oh, yeah. Atlanta does have a really good uh, D line, and Seattle's O line is looking very, very bad. Uh, that being said, I also w- still wouldn't start Matt Ryan because Seattle's D line is looking unreal. Mm. Yeah, well, we're going to get into that too in the Cowboys uh, Falcons game from this week because there was definitely some some obvious problems with the Cowboys offensive line that the, the Falcons took advantage of. That's why I was thinking maybe maybe a defense stream next week here against Seattle, but uh, but I don't know. Uh, the Cardinals, boy, they had a lot of injuries too. They lost their, lost the left tackle DJ Humphreys. They lost Tyron Branch and the tight end whose name I'm not even going to try to pronounce because I'll slaughter it. Uh, I think it's Moma. Ifeani Moa. There you go. Uh, season-ending injuries. So the Cardinals of 2017 are having a 2016 Chargers year in terms of injuries, right? I mean, they're just getting killed. Uh, Stanton might miss a few games with a sprained knee too. So he wasn't really playing all that well. Adrian Peterson didn't have a great game. It seems like the O line is falling apart. They will get uh, they will get some help, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks here with Jared Veldier coming back to the left tackle. But do you guys trust Adrian Peterson after this kind of game? I mean, he's still rolling him out there. He's getting the work. He's you have to trust him, um, and you have to trust him at flex. He's not going to be a solid RB two for you. Definitely not going to be RB one. But as a flex, that potential for him to be an RB one still there. Because they are going to feed that man the ball so much that you're just looking for one big run. You're looking for one 40-yard touchdown. There's going to be a million one-yard carries. Yeah, I would play him against Houston this week for sure. Yeah, uh, Larry Fitzgerald is the other guy that's pretty consistent. If Blaine Gabbert is the starter next week at Houston, you're still rolling Fitzgerald out, right? No downgrade at all? I mean, I'd like to say that there should be, but we thought there was going to be one with St- uh, going from Palmer to Stanton as well. Everyone on the Cardinals short of AP based on workload, is going to get a drop for me. All so right. if you value Fitz as a RB2, I mean, sorry, a wide receiver 2, he's a 3 for me. Wow, okay. All right. I don't have that kind of I, – I still have confidence in him. I think he's going to get Yeah, it. I still he's still playable, though. Yeah, he's playable. You're not benching him. I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd put him in, but if it was like him or Keenan Allen, I'd probably take the gamble with Keenan Allen, who has been vastly underperforming. Hmm. All right, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Uh, Jermaine Gresham also had a decent game, 64 yards, five receptions, and a touchdown. you got to hope that he'll still be involved uh, no matter what the quarterback situation is, but hard to trust. The Saints, 47, and the Bills, 10. The Saints on the road, right? Outdoors against an undefeated team at home. Of course they're going to score 47 points. We all saw that coming, right? Uh what what the heck was going on with this game? I want to talk to Max first on this one because the Bills, we talked about the Bills last week and how unprepared and unfocused they looked. The offensive line wasn't good. We saw a lot of that again this week. Is this something they can fix or is this a team that's on a downward trend right now? They can't get it together. I want to say they can fix it. I do. This is two weeks in a row looking bad. I mean, the Saints came out and established a run game early and I think that really solidified kind of the play style for the rest of the game. They beat up on the Bills' defense right at the very beginning, and the Bills couldn't bounce back. I don't know if it's lack of depth or poor coaching, but I'm not liking it. That being said, I'd still start Tyrod. I'd still start LaShawn McCoy every week. Mm. I wouldn't stream the Bills' defense anymore, though, until I see improvement, because if a team establishes any sort of run game against them, they're, the Bills are done. That's what I'm worried about because we keep tell, pe- telling people, like, don't worry about McCoy. You got to start him. You got to start him. But like, be honest now, the last two weeks, he's kind of killed you in most formats. I don't think he's well, an RB1 anymore. No, so I do. I still think he's an RB1. I mean, Tyreek Hill, not Tyreek Hill, um, Kareem Hunt had two bad weeks too. And bad, I just mean poor performing com- compared to what you expect now from him. LaShawn McCoy, even when he wasn't scoring touchdowns, was still getting a lot of work and uh, still producing. And for the amount of carries he got, I think he did okay. They need to get him more integrated into the game. They really do. That's, like, all I can say about that. Mm. So 
his position on that team, his need for that offense is still there, and they haven't found anything better. And it's it's almost like a necessity that LaShawn McCoy starts doing well for them. You know what I mean? So in my eyes, there's still an opportunity for him to have that RB1 status because they need him to have that RB1 status. In the last two weeks, they've gone away from him. Kind of like when KC went away from Hunt. Right. Well, this, they, The team doesn't look as good because they're not establishing a run game. Well, this is my concern right here. Is you said it yourself. When they get behind, they fall apart. They got the Chargers, the Chiefs, and the Pats, two away games, and it, and it gets a very good Pats offense. It's very likely they could go down early get down early in those games, and completely fall apart again. I'm really worried about the Buffalo offense right now. I, I don't know if it's unjustified. What do you think, Professor? You know what? I don't have as many worries as I feel like you guys do. I think with the schedule that they have, finishing up the season, and then in the playoffs is pretty great for fantasy. Yeah, New England's going to most likely put up points, but if you look at the last three matchups, so 14, 15, 16, we've got Colts, Dolphins, and Patriots – all who have pretty bad defenses. So I could see LaShawn McCoy maybe being the number one scoring running back in fantasy during the playoffs. Mm, okay. All right. I want to see them turn it around. That would be the next very nice here. for me. Yeah. I hope you're right. It would be nice. <laughs> so we said uh, Tyrod killed us this week in fantasy. Just a bad, bad week. Uh, McCoy was rough. Clay came back from injury, only two catches. So we kind of said wait on him to see if he's fully healthy and how he integrates back in. And Kelvin Benjamin got hit the field again. Three passes, only 42 yards, but he was targeted in the end zone. So I think they're going to keep working him in. Uh, you got to be patient on that one. I don't think we recommended too many people start Benjamin this week, though. Breeze had not a great game for Drew Breeze. 18 for 25, 184, touchdown on the ground. The good news was that Michael Thomas, you know, out of the guys that got targeted, he got targeted 10 times. Uh, Brandon Coleman had one reception, nothing really from any of the other wide receivers. It was a full run game. I want to hope that this is not the new plan for the Saints. You guys got to give me some confidence in Drew Brees and the wide receiver core here. They're not going to switch to a like just a Kamara and Ingram game plan, are they? Yes, I mean, they it, are, so- they it sounds weird to say, but the Saints are a running team. Yeah. Yep, one hundred percent agree with that statement. Yes, yeah. I mean. I, you still, you're still going to play Michael Thomas and maybe Ginn in the right matchup. But aside from that, there's nobody else on that offense that you really want to play. In regards to Breeze, I'm still going to roll him out there every week. I would much rather have him than streaming for the rest of the season. Okay. All right. Yeah, they got a decent uh, matchup the next couple of games, Redskins and Rams. They can both put up points. So you got to hope that you know Drew Breeze is going to go into – you know, catch up mode or keep up mode and throw some touchdowns for you. Daniel Lasco, this is just a quick sleeper sleeper pick here. Daniel Lasco, the only other running back that was on the depth chart was taken off the field in a scary hit on special teams. Trey Edmonds came in, nine rushes for forty eight and a touchdown. Also plays on special teams, which is good. Is this guy Trey Edmonds worth a stash if I have an open spot? You guys think he will get in any work later in the season, maybe in fantasy playoffs if they're resting Ingram and Kamara? No. Nope. I think they were just up by so much, and they knew the running game was working that they just brought in a backup. Hey, go get some playing time. All right. All right, man. Stretch your legs out. Go out there and run over this this Bills defense that we've demoralized. All right, the Titans and the Bengals, 24 to 20. Bengals lost. Got to love this, though. Mariota scrambling. And, Max, we talked about this. I think uh, this is good for the offense. When Mariota can move, you got to feel that hamstring is back. Uh, he had six rushes for 51 yards and pretty decent passing day. Should have had two other scores, but uh, Rashard dropped one and Corey Davis fumbled. So things I think are looking up for this Titans offense, right? Um, no. All right. They're not looking down, though. They're not looking down. I think <laughs> what you saw this week is basically what you should expect the rest of the season. That being said, the fact that Mariota is not in concussion, concussion protocol yet really has me concerned because I don't know if I'm the only person who saw it, but he did not look right after taking that huge hit. He looked wobbly, and if the NFL calls and says, hey, get him in a protocol, I wouldn't be surprised if he missed this week. Yeah, because it's a little late to start that. Yeah, I mean, it is, and it's maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I thought I saw something, but for three, three downs, I did not think he looked good. After he threw the touchdown, I didn't think he looked good. 
like, and I'm not saying like looked good, like oh, like bad pass. I'm saying looked good. I mean, like in the head, he looked wobbly. Threw a touchdown. His head was down. and He walked right to the sideline. That is not a good sign, I think, for a young quarterback throwing a game-winning touchdown. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I can kind of see that. If he is injured or if he does have a concussion, that's not good news. How do you feel about our trade we made in the Sleeper Wire League this week? Um, I was desperate. I'm okay with it. Same so the fact that I have wide receiver depth. Yeah, like, it was my Marlon Mack for Max's Richard Matthews. PPR I really, League, I, I only had three wide receivers on my team, so I had no <laughs> wide receiver depth, so I had to do something. Well, I mean, my issue is with, with Zeke Hurt. Alfred Morris was already taken off the board. I needed something. Or not yeah. Hurt, Zeke suspended, rather. I have running back depth, so it's really not the worst thing for me. Cause, but you wanted Parker. I really wanted C.J. Anderson, but I couldn't. I, I like Parker too much. And I feel like you wouldn't have given CJ up. So I think Matthews for Mac, it's probably going to be better for you in the long run because Matthews is targeted more and is going to have a potentially better production. But if I'm right about Marlon Mack towards the end of the season, definitely a playoff push. If the Colts are going to try to put up a fight, he'll be used more, especially when they're down. I don't think they're going to be up many more games. Well, and I think the season's already over, so I think they're going to want to give him a shot and see what he can do. Exactly. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. Yep. Right. Anyways. Wait, Chris, what about What's the up? trade I showed you I pulled off? Lamar Miller for Thielen? Yeah, that's pretty great. Yeah, my uh, the my buddy who I did the trade with texted me yesterday. And I, I was going to post the text in our group chat, but I forgot. And he said, why are you a fantasy god and know more than everyone in this <laughs> damn league? And keep in mind, I've been in this league for five years. I've made the championship. And this is a very competitive league, QQB, or Superflex, rather. I've only been in the championship once in five years. This year, I have one loss. For nice. some reason, I'm rolling. And it was just funny because he needed a running back. I needed a receiver similar to our league, but it was just kind of a higher quality or higher end players we traded. And I was, I'm so happy I got the end. Mm. Yep. Guys, it wouldn't be a sleeper wire show with Max if we didn't get to hear about one of Max's other fantasy leagues. Oh, yeah. Nah. And, and how great <laughs> and how great he's doing also, too. I, just, I, this, I, just, just this, dude, I, <laughs> I, I fully admitted that out of five years, I only made this the championship one year. And, and that now we're be, back to it. Uh, don't <laughs> bring it up. On? Don't bring it up. Oh my goodness! All right, let's get guys. The uh, the running backs. Uh, you gotta like this this uh, Demarco Murray game, right? Three touchdowns, not a lot of yep. yardage, but if you held on I to him, yep, I recommended Murray a ton on the blitz. It still seems like a fifty fifty split on the ground between those two running backs, though. I, I don't know what to do with them. I mean, who's was to saying on the mail sack? You got to start both of them. You got to hedge your bets. And you kind of do. I mean, I spoke to you about it, uh, Steve, last Monday when I said um, if Murray's good, start, like good to go, start him. Yeah. And if he's out, like uh, Derrick Henry's an RB one all day, but they're one of the few teams where both running backs are very good. They're kind of like the Saints. Yep. I mean, maybe not as productive as the Saints, but the caliber running backs similar. All right, those guys are looking pretty good for the fantasy playoffs. They got the Cardinals and the 49ers and the Rams in the last three weeks of uh, fantasy season. I like that. And uh, Corey Davis getting a little bit more involved on ten targets. So if you got Corey Davis, maybe patient one more week. But I think he's going to be a pretty good guy for you. Decker, though, I don't know if you want to keep him. Let's go to the uh, Bengals real quick. The touchdown dependent Bengals, as I'm going to call them. Dalton was all right. Not a great day, but serviceable. A.J. Green kind of saved his day with the 70-yard touchdown. Otherwise, he would have had four for 45. Touchdown dependent. Uh, Brandon LaFell uh, got the touchdown, but six for 95. Decent in PPR. Joe Mixon's the guy I want to talk about. I don't like him. I don't like the offensive line, and he's really yeah. not getting a lot of points, except he's getting the touchdowns. What am I to do with him? What am I? Can I get what? anything for him? Yes, you can. People still love him, and I was low on him at the beginning of the season. Didn't like the Bengals, didn't like Mixon, didn't think he was the best running back on that team, and I just still don't think he is. If I were you, I maybe McKinnon, if you're in a PPR league. Yeah, maybe, if I could pull it off. I mean, Or if someone is worrying about LaShawn McCoy, maybe package Mixon with something else. I would do that. I would do that. Because Hill's officially on IR now, so it's really only Mixon and, and Geo. Uh, and and Geo's still getting work. Yeah, he's still getting work. I but can't you, say it's you, good you, work. You can, you can play it two down weeks from LaShawn McCoy. Mixon's still getting the touchdowns. Mixon's the, the starting running back there. 
you pair Mixon with maybe you grab Danny Woodhead off the wire, give two RB2s or an RB3 and an RB2 for the RB1 that is LaShawn McCoy, boom. Would you take that? No McCoy Chris? owner would make that trade. No, you wouldn't take it? <laughs> you, you'd, be, you'd be surprised. Some McCoy owners would. You wouldn't because, you know, you know more. You know better. But there are leagues out there where guys are just doing it for fun, and they're pissed because two weeks in a row, McCoy's out. Or McCoy's not out. McCoy's under, vastly underperforming. He's yeah, old. The Bills those, suck. These, those have to be few and far between. Or how about Mixon for C.J. Anderson? Yeah, that's a little more fair. I was thinking more along the lines of uh, Mixon and Martin. Well, I like that. I wouldn't even want Doug Martin. Somebody might take that, though. That's not a bad one. They would take it. They would take it. I'd, I'd rather mix in at yeah. that point because I feel like All the right. production's similar. All right. I got you. I have a fun note here. The upcoming Bengals schedule, they play a lot of teams with orange in their uniform. The Broncos, the Browns, the Bears. I don't know what you want to do with <laughs> these guys. I mean, is LaFell maybe a stash? Not really. Croft didn't have a great game. I think you got to hold on to him, though. Right? Uh, I think so. Okay. All right. We'll see what happens with the Bengals. Not a cr- not totally crazy about them. Uh, let's move on to the Jaguars and the Chargers. 20-17 to 17 in a game that went into overtime. The Jags are quietly staying relevant in the AFC South, and it wasn't because of their quarterback play. I think it was because they have a good defense. Bortles, not bad. Uh, pretty inaccurate. Rivers, also, yes. Yeah, pedestrian day he is in the uh, concussion protocol right now so if rivers misses time it's either kellen clemens or cardale jones you can't like that i don't think although they do face the browns next week what do you think about that in terms of the passing game if rivers misses times you still starting everybody you still starting allen you still starting gordon you still starting everybody right I'm still I, most likely starting Allen and Gordon, but I don't yeah. think anyone else. Okay. Well, I mean, has anyone else been relevant to start? Not really. Oh, Hunter Henry, Henry I guess. In. Yeah, Henry a little bit. Tyro Williams showed up on the team again, dropped a touchdown, though. So is either one of those guys worth picking up, either Mike or Tyro Williams? Not nah. if Rivers is out. All right. Let's talk about Austin Eckler. Why was he getting so much work in the fourth quarter? I was asking that same question on Twitter. I have no idea. Because like, that's what the car that's what the was Carl's, that's what the Chargers do. They always have a check down running back. Melvin Gordon got a lot of work. He's getting beat up. It worked once, so they had him work it again. They weren't covering the wide receiving running backs, they just weren't doing it. Well, and these were series where like Eckler was in for the series to give Gordon some rest. Yeah, and they and they abused that. Because when right, Gordon's right. in he's probably gonna run, but no one was covering covering him. I don't think you can say he's probably going to run. I mean, Gordon is great in PPR. Oh, dude, I I understand that. But with Gordon, I'd be more worried about the run up the middle than I would about his catching ability because he's such a number one that someone's always looking at him. You know what I mean? He's so good that someone or two people have their eyes on Gordon at all times. But you have Eckler in, who's just the backup. Don't expect much from him. And the kid just came out and performed. And the Chargers capitalized on that. You got I will him. also oh, right? say this real quick. Uh, go listen to the great debate this week because Eckler is part of it. Okay, so you, he's definitely in the ad conversation, especially if you're a uh, Gordon owner. Because I was yeah, a little he's, concerned it was like an injury or something. Like maybe he was in pain or something, so they put Eckler in there. Yeah, Eckler's more of uh, just grab him as a handcuff at this point. He is yeah. worth picking up, but he's only going to be playable if Gordon goes down. Okay. Well, it's kind of like Connor for uh, – the Steelers. Yeah, yeah, Good exactly. running back, but like you'd never start him unless Bell goes down, because once Bell goes down, yeah, he's going to be great. Okay, right. but he yeah. does have the Same skills to, to, to be good if he does start. Okay, uh, Jacksonville's defense looks good, blah, 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 blah. Let's talk about the Chargers real quick. They slowed Leonard Fournette down to only 33 yards on 17 carries. Marquise Lee had a great game, 655 and a touchdown. Allen Hearns, decent game for PPR, but he will not play in Week 11 due to an ankle injury. So they're talking, man. D. Westbrook, he's ready. He's ready. If you haven't picked him up, he's worth the stash, right? Do you start him right away? They play the Bills next week. I would not start him right away. Who's that quarterback? Exactly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, there you go. Adam, don't start him. Anything else on the uh, on the uh, delicious Jaguars team that you guys want to get into, or is that pretty much it? Um, um, start well, their defense? I mean, obviously. <laughs> they. I thought it was kind of funny that the person who kicked the game-winning field goal was Josh Lambeau, who the Chargers cut. 
That what? was kind of funny. You know, <laughs> yeah, hey, don't sleep fun. on the Chargers defense, though, because they have the Jags old head coach. Didn't do well there. But he is also the old Seattle Seahawks defensive coordinator. So if you're thinking the Chargers defense is looking a little better, it's because of that man right there. I, li- I like their defensive schedule coming up. Browns, Cards, Colts, then Seahawks, Texans, and 49ers. Uh, that is not a bad streaming defense, I don't think, coming fantasy playoff time. So there you go. Buccaneers, 15, Jets, 10. What a useless load of fantasy crap this was. We were all thinking that it was going to be, you know, McCown having a good day, Fitzpatrick having a pretty good day. But the Jets couldn't convert third downs. They didn't play hard. They looked unfocused, committed lots of penalties. McCown ended up with 262 and a touchdown and an int. Uh, Robbie Anderson was solid. We, we told you to start him, 85 and a touchdown. ASJ, decent game, PPR. But what happened? Bilal Powell, just 30 yards on 10 carries, only one pass. He had. He, we thought he would have the entire backfield to himself. But Elijah McGuire cut in for eight carries and caught 36 receiving yards. So it wasn't a committee, but it's still a committee. Now it's just a committee of two instead of three. What's going on? Did you Did say that? that Josh McCown threw an int? I did. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He Sorry, did. go ahead, Max. Did he not? I... Th- he he did. It, I've never it, heard anyone call it an int. What is well, it? int interception, int. Oh you no, want. I, I yeah, I understand <laughs> what it is. I've just never heard anyone say. Oh. It. <laughs> All right. Well, with this, with the Jets, honestly, with Tampa Bay too. These teams who really don't have good running backs, Seattle included, my 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 lovely team, pick one. It doesn't matter. Just pick one. Pick a running back and use them. Only use that one. Let your running back get twenty carries. Let him get worked. Let him. Break out the big one because it's not fair to the running backs and it's not fair to the fantasy players, but mostly it's not fair to the running backs. Bilal Powell should have had more than 10 carries. Like, it, it's, I can't stand indecision from coaches. When you don't know what you want to do with your team, this is what gets, what makes your team. Hey now. You know what I mean? Like, Andy Reid had Hunt and he had uh, Jarkantric West. West is a good running back. He went all in on Hunt, and that's how you should do it. You pick a running back to go all in on, give him two full games. If in two full games you are not impressed, go to the next running back. Give them two full games and com- keep going. You know what I mean? I hate this indecision by coaches to just keep constantly switching players out and just, oh, we're going to play the hot hand. Well, the hot hand seldom works if you don't have enough carries to really get going. you got to get the hand warm to get it hot, right? Exactly. <laughs> so Very what- few running backs are Latavius Murray on his first carry in the NFL going for a touchdown. All right, so is McGuire a guy that you might stash, hoping that that don't happens? stash anyone on that team? No, all right, N- no, you. Uh, I any would running keep backs. Forte. Yeah, well, Forte, he's like a blunt. He's like a, he's like a little Garrett Blunt to me. Like he's better than Blunt, but like you have him if you're desperate because of a buy, throw him at flex. All right. I mean, because this is the situation we're in. We're we're coming towards the playoffs. You got to cut the dead weight. You hate to cut running backs. But if you got to keep one, it's Forte. Are you cool with dropping the other two for a piece that you might use later on? Steve, if you Forte know is healthy, then yeah, you know I'm a running back like hoarder. I think we can agree on that, guys. I, I like to hoard running backs. You have a I problem. don't care. Yep, I, I have a problem. <laughs> I which is prob- weird because in the sleeper wire league, you have all these wide receivers, and I'm <laughs> the one with a full bench of running backs. It's just how it worked out this season, dude. I'm making the bench a smaller next year. I. I it, Different time, different place to that conversation. I wouldn't. I'd start. I'd stash Bilal Powell from that team, and that's just because I like him the most. Besides right. that, I wouldn't hold any of them. Okay. And, or it's like if you're Chris, you stash Forte and don't hold the other two because right now you're just holding one and hoping he sticks. Yeah, and when Forte is healthy, he's clearly the one getting most of the work. Yeah, and you're just hoping the, as a Bilal Powell owner, Forte never gets that healthy. But right. that being said, I wouldn't have both of them. I wouldn't try to pick which one was better. I would just kind of grab one, hold them, see if it works out. If it doesn't, get rid of them. All right. And no love. Fair enough. Fitzpatrick, though, didn't help the offense very much. Uh, only 187 yards and a touchdown. Also an int. Deshaun Jackson was a beneficiary <laughs> of uh, Mike Evans missing time. Six for 82, good PPR day. Cameron Brait, though, we expected him to get some work. Only one catch for 10 yards. Don't like that. Are you worried about this team when Evans comes back? Are you worried about his value next week when he comes back with Fitzpatrick playing the way he did? No, I mean, I'm still going to start Mike Evans, you know, every single week, regardless of who the quarterback is. But, you know, you got to temper your expectations down a little bit. All right. So maybe like trade Mike Evans two. away. 
That's what I've been thinking too, man. Go get yourself a Juju Smith Schuster and be happy with it. Evans got name value. Wait, stuff. trade Evans for Juju? I would Juju straight up. Mm-hmm. Yep. No way. He, one, my logic: Tampa Bay is a bad quarterback. Tampa Bay is a bad team this year. I would rather the rest of the season getting. 12 points a week from Juju Smith-Schuster, then a 2, 2, 0, 28, 2, 2. Max, 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 I'm not one of your friends who you're trying to talk into a trade. I don't have <laughs> Mike Evans. Like. I don't have Mike Evans. So this is, this is genu- I would rather consistent production over a boom and bust guy, and he's boom and bust because his team is bad. That trade will get vetoed 10 out of 10 times. I mean, it will, but that's, like, realistically, I'd be happy with that. Go for Adam Thielen then. Like get get something back from him while he still has a big name because he does. You could probably get, but he's not he's not a top ten receiver this year. He just isn't. You could probably get he's like a Marvin big name. Jones, right? You could get Marvin Jones. That seems fair. Yeah, Marvin Jones. Would be, I'd be fine with that too. I'd rather have Marvin but like, Jones. Than Juju Evan. Smith. All right, maybe the bottom of the barrel. But that being said, in the PPR league, I'd be fine with Juju Smith Schuster, and that's because his production is every week. I wouldn't trade Evans for any of those guys. I'm right. proud of you. <laughs> Let's talk this about why, Let's, this. Is why I win championships. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> What's your record in this? <laughs> oh, no, dude, shut up. Chris is going to go scoreboard on you. Let's talk real quick about Doug Martin. Only 51 yards on 20 carries. Got the work. I'm curious if he's safe for dynasty owners. I'm not sure if he's going to be on this team next year. What do you guys think? Better I wouldn't not. be surprised if he's not. Uh, mm-hmm. They don't owe him any money due to that uh, suspension. No, they don't. If you know, it'd be cool if he went to Miami. It's a team that won't commit to a run game. He shouldn't be getting 20 carries a game because he's honestly kind of injury prone at this point. He'd be a decent little like RB2 flex option with 15 carries a game. He'd probably be good for them. Hmm. All right. Keep it in mind, Dynasty owners. Let's move on to the Packers and the Bears. Packers 23, Bears 16. Hundley looked pretty good this game, actually. Much better than he had. Very accurate in the second half against that tough Chicago defense. 18 for 25 for 212 yards and a touchdown. I don't know. He looks good. Give him some passes, and he has a pretty good game. Is uh, Hundley trending up? He's starting to become maybe fantasy relevant? I mean, I feel like, are you saying this is a good game compared to what he'd been doing. Yes. Because you just said Fitzpatrick and McCown had bad games, and it was basically the same stat line. Yeah, but it's Hunley's get, looking better than he had. Like, he's okay. getting more Well, you said he had a good game, but <laughs> just after saying the other guys played like crap. Well, I mean, Hunley has better receivers than McCown and Fitzpatrick, but I'd pick up Case Keenum before I'd pick up Hunley. Okay. All right. Yeah, I agree. He's he's still not worth rostering. All righty. Aaron Jones uh, expected to miss three to six weeks with an MCL injury. Didn't have uh, very much to do this week with only three carries before he got hurt. And Ty Montgomery, rib injury again. They think he's going to play in week 11. Had an okay game. Jamal Williams is the guy we're looking at this week, though. 20 carries for 67 yards. Is he a guy you got to pick up right away? Yeah. You feel good about oh, well, starting yeah, him, Oh, well, yeah, because though? the only time he's going to have value is this week. But do you feel good about starting him against the Ravens? Um, I am not going to say yes or no. It's completely team dependent, but he's our subject, the other player in this week's great debate. So we're doing Jamal Williams and Austin Eckler. So I'll leave it at that. All right. We'll leave it at that then. Go listen to that one. Okay. All right. Devontae, yeah, shut this episode off right now. Yes. Leave a five-star review and go listen to the great debate. <laughs> yeah. We already got the download for this episode. So. Yeah. We're, we're good, good to go. We don't have any sponsors to please either. So we're good. Uh, Devonta <laughs> Adams had the game though. Five catches, 80 yards, touchdown. Jordy and Cobb weren't really involved. So I'm thinking that this is probably going to continue this way. Adams seems to be Hundley's favorite target. You're feeling good about starting Adams, kind of fading these other guys to flex territory if you're desperate. Is that where we're at? I'm not be? feeling. Feeling good about Adams, not feeling good about him, but see, still playing him. Would you trade away Jordy Nelson right now? Yeah, 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 I would too. I mean, it would obviously be dependent if someone offers me, you know, someone like Marlon Mack for him. I'm not going to make that trade. What about Juju Smith Schuster? Oh yeah, I think I would do that. Really, the the main reason to hold on to Jordy right now, even if he's just going to play the bench, is because Rogers still has a chance to come back. He's not going to, That's but he's got a chance. You're what, saying there's what, a like week 15 maybe, you think? Is yeah. That, is that the timeline? Say so he could come back? Um, I think it's 15 or 16. All right, so he's either, so either going to come back. If he comes back, he's playing either the Panthers, then the Vikings, or just the Vikings. 
And I don't know. Those are tough defenses to play against coming back. Still an auto start for Jordy, though. Yeah, I guess so. He might be filling that stash spot. All right, uh, we'll get into the Martellus Bennett drama in a little bit because Mitch Trubisky, finally they let the guy throw more than 10 passes, 21 for 35 for 297 yards and a score. Inman looked okay, got a 6 for 88. Kendall Wright and the Jay Bellamy got a touchdown. And Jordan Howard did not have a good game. Only 15 carries. And they didn't use Tariq Cohen. Instead, they got Benny Cunningham involved. So why would the Bears Cunningham decide isn't bad. to... Yeah, but Cohen's like a, a playmaker. Why are they just not involving him anymore? He was good before. I uh, mean, that's... Glennon was the one getting him involved. Well, not only that, but like... There's a lot of stuff that goes on in back offices that we don't know about. Look at Ajayi. We're all like, why is he not getting the work? Why is he not getting the work? Now he's on the Eagles. So maybe Cohen's being a disruption in the locker room. Jordan Howard would still start. Cohen, I mean, wait for an update either from us or from ESPN or wh- whatever other source you have. And um, play it by ear for PPR leagues. But Jordan Howard's the guy you want to have on that team. Yeah. So you're not rushing out to pick up Cunningham or Inman? No. I think, I think I think I think Cohen's still a, the number two guy there. He's still the PPR guy there for you. Right. I don't really know what's going on, but All right. I think Inman is worth picking up because anytime you have a player who gets six for eighty eight, it's worth taking a flyer on him the next week if you have the spot. Right. We actually almost had him as one of the players for the great debate to, but we decided to go with running backs. But he's if you have a spot, you know maybe you have to drop someone because of a bye week. He's worth a shot. Okay. All right, they got a, a decent schedule coming up the next six weeks. Uh, I'm liking the 49ers, and uh, I'm liking the game against the uh, Browns at the end of the season. So that, that might be a sneaky, some sneaky fantasy playoff upside in that team. The Lions beat the Browns 38-24. Browns still looking, you know, good at losing. At least they're trying to keep it competitive. Sammy Coates got involved. Kenny Britt. Wow, he's good. Two for 38 and a touchdown. Kaiser had an okay game in the ground. 57 wow, yards good. <laughs> and a touchdown. I mean, Kennedy Britt's the best receiver on that team right now who's playing. He really is. And the well, fact that they Josh haven't used him all back. season because he doesn't want to be there. He just took a contract. I mean, he's a head case, but <laughs> Corey Coleman's there now. With no. Corey Coleman back, honestly, if Corey Coleman's the number one and Kennedy Britt's the number two, I wouldn't mind starting Kenny Britt because he'll get open. I still think the Browns are bad, though. Well, you just wait until Josh Nor- Josh uh, Gordon comes back because he's the one, two, and three, and those guys are all become very irrelevant very quickly when he hits. The That's field. what I'm saying. Uh, hey, but uh, Isaiah Crowell, though, I know, right? Ninety yards and a touchdown. Somebody, uh, he's, he's got to be on waivers. Is he worth picking up? Yeah, I, got to right. Yeah, I mean, running back value at this point in the season, if they're getting the work, you got to have them on your roster at some point, right? I liked him last week. We talked about it. Nice head. Get him. I might actually have what's to his, grab him. What's his ownership right now? Crowell? Ooh, I yeah. will look it up. Give me one second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to venture guess 52%. 52. I'm going to say I was thinking more about 65. Yeah. I'd be okay. He is 77% owned. Wow. In Yahoo leagues. That's, That's actually... Well, he's plus two from last week, so he was 75% owned, which is still pretty low for a number one running back on a team. Yeah. Well, people were Yeah, I him. completely understand why people dropped him. Oh, yeah. I actually – I had to make that call in one of my leagues. It kind of hurt after being so high on Crowell the entire offseason. But just think about this, though. So he's 77% owned after being plus two from last week. So last week he was 75. Last week, Jarek McKinnon, who's – Definitely splits time now with Latavius Murray is ninety three percent owned. So it shows you kind of how the average player is viewing Isaiah Crowell. That could be a, definitely a, a good buy low for you. I'd still take McKinnon over Crowell. Oh, PPR definitely. But if I had Doug Martin, I'd consider trading Doug Martin for Crow. I was yeah, gonna I say, see that. yeah, trade deadline's coming up pretty soon. Crowell might be a nice little buy low target. Although he had a pretty good game. I think that stigma of him stinking in the beginning of the season might still be around. You might be able to talk him. Hugh Jackson said Corey Coleman will be all systems go this weekend against Jacksonville. Tough defense to come back against, but uh, it's nice to hear that Corey Coleman will be back. And the only other guy that got any action set the bell. Four for 70. Worth a look for tight end stream coming up against the Jags, Bengals, Chargers. Corey nah. Coleman and Isaiah Crowell are the only two that are really worth a look on that team until further notice. All righty. 
Detroit side, uh, Matthew Stafford, 249, three touchdowns and an interception. Golden Tate had a great game. Marvin Jones, one for 22. I don't know why this happened. Any idea why Marvin Jones was not involved in this game? That's the MO of the Lions. Marvin Jones goes off, and then he's quiet, and then he's quiet, and then he goes off, and then he's quiet. Just It's kind of what he did last season, too. He's a good receiver. He's definitely a riskier play than most good receivers because there are games where if he's not open, Stafford's not going to force him the ball. He doesn't have to. He's still a wide receiver, too, in my opinion. He's a trade target for me coming up at the trade deadline here. If I can get a piece of Marvin Jones, I'm, I'm very happy with that, especially after a down week. Chris, I want to talk to you about Eric Ebron. Two for 39 and a, and a touchdown. He's a stud. He's the GOAT. He's the MVP candidate for me Caught this year. Him. I'm dropping Gronk for Ebron immediately. Oh, God, Steve, I hate you so much. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, Theo Riddick and I don't Galladay, really want to talk about Ebron. <laughs> any upside for, for Galladay? I'll talk about Ebron. I'll talk Riddick, I don't, he's not worth Ebron. having. Ebron, none thank of these guys? You. Leave him on the waiver. No water. for Ebron. All right. Why don't you ask me about Ebron? No, thank you. I've heard all your Ebron takes plenty of times. <laughs> Plenty of times. Abdullah had a decent game too. Fifty two yards on eleven carries. You gotta wish they just gave him a few more carries though. I'd like to see him get fifteen to twenty a week, but um He should be know. getting twenty five carries a week every week. Hot hand. Let it get warm. Here's the thing. But He's, this is just what they've always done with him. He's yeah, never been a high volume guy. It's but always it's what they've and, always done with every running back they've had. For the last right. ten years. That's why right. none of them work. Because they're like, Oh yeah, he gets eleven carries and didn't do much with it. Yeah, so Adrian Peterson gets 36 carries, has a great game, but guess what? He had two rushes that equaled 102 yards. You know what I mean? Ezekiel Elliott looked bad for his first 12 carries in the first half, but in the second half, his last 12, he exploded. And I'm not putting him on the level of them, but I'm saying you have to give more carries to your starting running backs, especially if he's your guy, which Abdullah is their guy right now. He is even demanding more carries. He's like, I want the ball more. Give me the ball more. Just give him the ball. I'm going to propose to you this. He faces the Bears, the Vikings, and the Ravens the next three weeks. Tough defenses. Is Abdullah a trade target before the deadline here? In the fantasy playoff, he's got the Bucks, the Bears, and the Bengals. I think he can have success against those three teams. Well, I mean the Bears twice, but you think I can get him for the good good get for the fantasy playoffs, Abdullah? I'm not trying to get him. No. Who would you be get, giving up? I don't know. Uh, Doug Martin, Doug Lamar Martin, Miller. McKinnon, Lamar Why is that? Miller? We always go to Doug I mean, Martin because he's just on my head. He's a good. He's a he's a name that's on a bad team, and not, he's not just always in the middle of the running back conversation. He really is. Um, him, Lamar Miller. I'd probably trade for Abdullah because the upside I think is better. The team is better against the Ravens and Bears. They should be up against them, so I could see him getting more work. But the issue is they just don't trust him. I, I target him. I like him. I think I've made that clear on the show over the over the season. I do like him as a running back. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I target him, but it really depends on what I'm giving up. What about Adrian Peterson for Abdullah? You think anybody would take no. that? No? They'd no. take it, but I wouldn't do it. You don't like it. Okay. All right. Thank you for the guidance, Max. Vikings and Redskins. Vikings 38, the Redskins 27. A little personal story. I'll take a page out of Max's book. Two-quarterback league. I was thinking that the Redskins defense looked good last week against Seahawks. So, I dropped Keenum. I picked up. I think McCown or somebody, and uh, then he has a career game. Who would have thought? We thought it was a defensive game, but it was a shootout. So Steve, I'm about to send you a screenshot w- of what my two QB league where I traded for Thielen. I started Case Keenum this week. Well, Can he, we talk about these later? You just, you just. <laughs> I should start asking you for fantasy advice, Max. 304 yards, four touchdowns. Can Case Case Keenum win a Super Bowl? They're going to stick with him at quarterback. Is he a Super Bowl caliber quarterback this year? I mean, it sounds weird to say, but I'm I'm going to say if the Vikings do happen to get there, it will not be solely because of Case Keenum. I agree with that. See, the Vikings, it's one of those things where it's like any given Sunday, anything can happen. Right. Case Keenum, he's not going to be the worst quarterback to win a Super Bowl if they did win a Super Bowl. You know what I mean? But it'd be more on their defense and on their skill players. Okay. It'd I'll also be, say this: the Vikings are the most well-rounded. Oh yeah, team with with a healthy Stephon Diggs, they're the agree. most well-rounded team in the NFL. The, the number one and number two receivers are both very good. Both their their two starting running backs are very good. Their defense looks really good. I mean, they let up twenty-seven points this week, but they still looked good. Uh, Case Keenum, he's 
he's above average quarterback. Like you said, Chris, it's an extremely well rounded team. So if they made it to the, the if they made it to the ship and they won, I wouldn't be like, oh my god, beside myself. But I wouldn't think it's because Case Keenum is the best quarterback in the league or even close. Right. Right, and it's a great move for them to stick with Case Keenum. I don't know why. I keep hearing people talk about wanting Teddy Bridgewater back, and the dude threw 14 touchdowns his last full season. Like, Case Keenum is so much better for this offense. See, but that, that's the thing, though. Case Keenum was made for this offense because they made this offense for Sam Bradford, and they're very similar quarterbacks. I don't think the team thought Bridgewater would be back this soon, and I know it's been a long time, but it actually is soon for the severity of Bridgewater's injury. But... This season, Case Keenum has earned the starting job. Right, boy, Minneapolis yep. would yep. explode if they, if they ended up in the if if they made it to the Super Bowl in Minneapolis. That town would yep. be electric. That would be what nuts. else would be crazy would be when after they win the Super Bowl, they cut Case Keenum so he can go get a contract somewhere <laughs> because they're going to stick with Teddy Bridgewater as their franchise. Oh my goodness, let's Max. Let's talk about running backs. I know you love to Latavius Murray, seventeen carries, McKinnon only ten. Murray looks good this week. Is he healthy, and does he take over the job? He looks healthy, and I said at the beginning of the season, the early down work will be his. It'll be Murray's job. Uh, McKinnon's definitely more a, a pass-catching back, and that's if you want to reflect back to when Adrian Peterson got hurt and they had Matt Asiata, that's how it shook out, and that's how I see it shaking out, and that's kind of how I look going forward. McKinnon, I will say, has definitely developed a little more since then as a run as a running back in general, so he'll get more work than he did back then. But I think Latavius Murray, for your goal line work, first, second down work, middle of the field, I'd look at him. If you had to pick one to start, who would it be? PPR standard. Oh, so that makes a difference. It does, because I do think, like, I would lean Latavius Murray because touchdown potential, and I think he is going to get work. That being said, I do think Jarek McKinnon can, get, can catch seven passes at any given game. Right, yeah, I would still go with McKinnon over Murray as well. Yeah, so it, 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 it's a tough call. I'd be f- kind of okay with either one, but PPR, I'd go McKinnon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys said you, you like the offense in general. It looks well-rounded. I mean, you could start both Thielen and Diggs with confidence. You're still starting Kyle Rudolph, so get both of those guys. E- either one of those running backs, you'd be good to go. For the Redskins, tough loss. They played okay for the offense. The defense could not stop the Vikings, though. It was weird because they played well last week. Cousins had all five of his starting old linemen back. We told you last week if that line can get healthy, he's a good quarterback start every week. Had a pretty good game, 327, one touchdown and a pick, but he had four carries with two touchdowns to salvage and make a really nice week. Jameson Crowder, Vernon Davis, 11 targets each. It looks like the -the over-the-middle stuff is what Cousins likes, right? Is that is that what I'm seeing? I'm not seeing a lot of long shots towards Doxon, though, right? I think we saw a lot of zone this week, and with the zone coverage... You're going to throw a lot of over the middle and just try to beat the defense inside right. their own area. That's why he was throwing the ball low. That's why he was putting balls in kind of hard places for Crowder to catch. So Crowder was having a hard time, which is very unlike Crowder. I feel like it's kind of defense dependent on how you see him throw the ball. All right. Vernon Davis is a safe start, though. As long as Reed is out, you got to start Vernon yep. Davis, right? Yeah, 100%. All right, Terrell Pryor, I, I got news that he was seen on the sideline catching a cold, so there you go, one reception. No, no, he actually dropped it. He dropped the cold. Okay, good for Yeah, him. he dropped All right, the cold. Guys, Staying healthy. Terrell Pryor, why was he good in the Browns and not good in the Redskins? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Don't know. It doesn't make but, sense. But, like, it's not even the fact that he's not good. It's the fact that they were like, oh, you had a bad game? Oh, you had two bad games. All right, um, you're on the bench for the rest of the season. It's like, what? He had more than two bad games. But he had two noticeably like bad games. This guy was going into the season looking to be their number one, and I feel like by week five he was so irrelevant. It was like I'd be more comfortable with Kenny Britt on my team, who I think played his first snaps this past week. It's just it, it, it kind of blows my mind where Terrell Pryor has kind of established himself on the worst team in the league last year as the number one receiver and a decent receiver to going to a better team, and they're just like, nah. You don't fit. Sorry. I think you hold on to him in a dynasty league, hoping that he gets traded to a team where he gets used, but yeah, you're not starting him at all anymore. Rob Kelly, though, uh, ankle injury, high ankle sprain. Not sure what's going to happen health, like, you know, in terms of medical treatment yet, but I think Samaj Perine is the guy you got to pick up if you need a the, running back, but I don't like him. He'd be him. the only running back on that team besides Chris Thompson at war. Yeah, but he's not that, I don't think, not that useful. I don't know. I don't know why they like him so much. I don't know either. Uh, they got the Giants in a week after they play the Saints, so maybe it'll be useful a couple times down the road, but um, I'm not feeling it too much. 
The Steelers beat the Colts 20 to 17. I could have swore that the Colts had won this game. I don't, I don't know really what happened here. Brissett showed some big playability, made some mistakes, but, uh, 220 yards, two touchdowns, interception, gore, pedestrian game. Marlon Mack, seven for seven, two catches for 19. They still not getting him involved as much as we'd like, but you guys feel like he'll be involved down the road once the playoffs start? I do think so. Okay. I think so. And I also think that when the Colts kind of start getting blown out, which we kind of expect them to, because right. their defense really isn't that good. That's where you're going to see Mac more for the passing downs. All right. Okay. Uh, Chester Rogers, six receptions for 104 yards and a touchdown. Do I add him? No, I don't think you do. All right. Moncrief, one for 60 and a touchdown. Sammy Watkins, Jr., do I add him? Uh, Moncrief is worth more of an add than Chester Rogers. All right. I'd add Sammy Watkins. Yeah, I think I would, too. If I had to pick Oh, yeah, I'd rather have Watkins of him. Yeah. Goff is playing like a man possessed. Robert Woods and Watkins are doing things they couldn't do on the Bills, like staying healthy and catching passes. <laughs> yeah, right? All right, so uh, T.Y. and uh, Jack Doyle, both only two receptions each. So so much for getting your Roll best them out players next involved. Week. You have to. You have to. It's hard to, to sit them, but they're much more of a roll of the dice. Big Ben, 236, two touchdowns, interception. Uh, Le'Veon Bell had a lot of work. Got you the yardage, no touchdown. Antonio Brown, quiet game from him. What happened there? Uh, you know, I have no idea because Antonio Brown has put up eight touchdowns the last three games against the Colts. He just took a day off. They, they double covered him. They covered him well. And Juju Smith-Schuster and Martavius Bryant was there, was back again. Big Ben spread the ball around. They weren't in like – I almost feel like they were in desperation mode and he wasn't looking at Antonio Brown. Mm. They have a lot of good receivers in that team. Yeah, Juju Smith-Schuster definitely tore him up. I will say it was good to see the Colts play well against not only Antonio Brown, but Le'Veon Bell. Bell still had 80 yards rushing and 32 yards receiving, but no touchdowns. That's that's about as good as you can play against Le'Veon Bell. You guys mentioned Smith-Schuster had a good game, and if he's, I mean, he's probably picked up off most waivers. The guy is playing really well. Uh, we've been talking about him in trades, though. Is he something that you would want to get for fantasy playoffs? Like, how much would you be willing to spend? If you want to talk about overspending, I'd probably overspend with Mike Evans just because I don't really believe in Mike Evans or right. Tampa Bay for the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. But if I could get Juju Smith-Schuster for, like, Devontae Parker, Juju. Robert Woods, who's been doing really well, i consider for Juju Smith. Okay. 49ers 31, Giants 21. The New York Giants don't look like they want to play defense anymore. So I'm saying start everybody against the Giants for the rest of the season until they start doing every something. Every tight end. Every tight end for sure because they're really every, bad against tight Every end. number one or two receiver, every tight end, every quarterback, and every starting running back. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what their name. Garrett Selick, four for 67 and a touchdown. Goodwin, we uh, we liked Goodwin coming into this week. Only one catch, but he did make it an 83 harder and a touchdown, so that'll work. Goodwin, I will say, keep his family in your prayers. He actually lost his child before the game, um, so the fact that he was even on the field was amazing. It's a, a yeah, sad lost, day for the Goodwin family. That is yeah, sad. it was a miscarriage. And I think, did you see the picture that he took with it, his uh, finger and it his? Was, it was heartbreaking. Yeah, it was. So it, it was, was so great sad. to see him score a touchdown and just break down on the field. Yeah, it, um, so expect, expect I guess, better things from him. He still did well for you if you started him. I played yeah. him. And I also, I played Garrett Selleck over Ed Dixon and Tyler Croft this week. Nice call. Nice call. You Look gonna at keep you. Him, you going to keep him on the team and start him uh, next couple of weeks here? I only played him because George Kittle was out. Okay. But if Kittle stays out, I might consider playing him next week. What about it was you? I had Ertz on a bye in okay. a couple weeks. Okay. Or a couple leagues. So that's why I had to have an emergency play. Hell of a fill in. How about Goodwood? You yeah. guys starting him still? You feeling good about him oh, the yeah. next six weeks? Okay. Yeah. He's all the number he's, one. He's all they got and he's so fast. He's like Ted Ginn on the Panthers. Nice. All yeah, right. but he's faster. He was an Olympic uh, sprinter, wasn't he? I'm just comparing the fact that like he's not a great receiver, but he's burns defenses and he's the only target besides yep. the tight end. Yeah, okay. absolutely. All right, a little value from Matt Breida finally come back. He didn't have a really good week last week, but nine carries for 55 and a touchdown. So if anybody dropped him and you're a Carlos Hyde owner, grab him. Would you grab him even if you're not a Carlos Hyde owner? Because that team is probably destined to lose a few more games. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Very good. Eli Manning, two touchdowns, 
273. Sterling Shepard, we told you to start him, 142 yards on 11 catches. That is awesome. Evan Ingram got the touchdown, 31 yards. Orleans Dark was 70 yards, 14 carries. So you kind of have to start. It's the same situation. If you're playing against 49ers, you start your skill players. You're going to get points, right? Absolutely. Falcons 27, Cowboys 7. No Zeke or bad O-line play by the Cowboys. What happened here? Bad O-line play, not giving Alfred Morris enough carries. I feel like their game plan got blown up in the first quarter, and they just didn't know what to do after that. Yeah, that's I couldn't put it any better. All right, so uh, what are we doing? Alfred Morris, you said, didn't get enough work. Rod Smith got some passing work. The, the staff, everybody said the staff, the Dallas staff was high on him. We didn't see really anything from McFadden. So after a week, is it too early to say eliminate McFadden from the mix? No, it's it's right. He should be eliminated. I think going forward, it's still going to be Alfred Morris. This game was, to me, reminiscent of the Denver game where they couldn't get the run game established in the first quarter and they just completely gave up on it. Mm. I don't really see that happening much more going forward. Against the Eagles next week? You don't see them going down early? Well, that's tough. So the Eagles are such a great team, but I feel like the Cowboys are smart. They'll just stick to their style of football, which is run and run and run and play action. That's the well, only way a, they can succeed. It's a division game, too, so these yeah. two teams know each other very well. All right. The uh, Cowboys have the Giants, the Raiders, and the Seahawks in the fantasy playoffs, so you got to like that for value in terms of those guys. It looked like they went to a very short passing game, though, and I think that that speaks to the what you guys were saying about the game plan. Witten had a good day. Des Bryant caught a couple for you know decent work. So I, I think it's I think it's a process. I think they're going to get better, but uh, you know they just lost Zeke on Thursday. So it was kind of a quick adjustment, I guess. They've probably been planning for it, though. Matt Ryan on the other side, 250 yards, two touchdowns, and an int. Julio Jones, decent game, whatever. Austin Hooper, up and down. He's a startable matchup kind of guy, I think. Uh, Mohamed Sanu kind of disappeared, 3 for 21. The big news is that Devonta Freeman, unlikely to play next Monday, second concussion in as many weeks. So it's a Tevin Coleman thing. 83 yards this week, got a touchdown. How does this work? Max, you were talking to me last week about the wide receiver values dropping in certain ways when Tevin Coleman is the running back. So go over that one more time for me. When Tevin Coleman is the starting back, Matt Ryan tends to check down to him a lot more often. When He's he's obviously one of the best receiving backs in the NFL right now. I'd say he's up there with, with Le'Veon Bell and LeSean McCoy as far as efficiency. So I would see that hurting the wide receivers. It was nice to see Gabriel kind of doing some stuff if Sanu isn't because Sanu didn't look that good. Julio is still looking good. So going on, going forward, what you saw from the receivers this week, I would kind of expect to see next week. So not bad, not great, but, you know, serviceable. Still don't overreact to Austin Hooper. N- I like Austin Hooper. Why? I, I just like him. He's just not know. involved enough to be worth anything. He isn't involved enough, I would agree, but... As a speculative ad, if you have a Hunter Henry that you're not too stoked about right now, you wouldn't be bad to have in your team. Or, I mean, you could always go Jared Cook. Love that, that man. Well, you're going to be out uh, Jack Doyle and ASJ next week on by. So, or this week, I, I should say. Hooper. So, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. you might have to play him next week, but he's, uh, unless it's necessity, you shouldn't have him. Texans fell to the Rams, 7-33. The Texans made a lot of mistakes. It cost them. Tom Savage had four turnovers total, just yucky. DeAndre Hopkins, though, managed a good game, 7 for a 111. Will Fuller left with a rib injury. Is this the time to snag Bruce Ellington? He had four for 41 and a touchdown. Is he a guy I want to grab? Yep. Nope. Okay. Yep. Not for me. Fuller's out. They love the number twos there. He's going to be open. Savage isn't the best, so check downs are going to be great for him. So tight ends, running backs, I mean, look at Lamar Miller being more involved in the passing game, but I like Ellington as a flex. And I'm not playing any wide receiver there except for Hopkins. Yeah. Flex and a PPR, Ellington. Nope. Not a chance. Fedorowicz? Right, well, maybe? Nope. Nope. Hopkins Chris just doesn't like tight guy. ends. He's a hater. Texans defense? I, I love tight ends. What are you talking about? Uh, Texans defense, I don't. they don't look good. They've scored me negative points now. That yeah, usually I mean, means I drop them. They, they look, have this aura that they're this great defense every that's year. They have been for a while. Yeah, without JJ Watt and oh, I forget who else went out for them. Merciless. But they're 
their secondary, I feel like, is okay still, but their uh, D line is just letting, not putting enough pressure on the QB, not putting enough pressure on the run game. They're definitely a streamable defense, yeah. but the Rams are on fire this year, and I think that kind of didn't help their cause. Here's here's the stats for an okay secondary. Here's what they gave up. Robert Woods, 171 yards and two scores. Sammy Watkins, 41 yards and a score. Cooper Cup, 47 yards. Todd Gurley, 68 receiving yards. That's a that's a good secondary? I said, this season, they've been okay. And the Rams are torching Not everyone anymore. this year. Not anymore. Though. So I can't, like, it's, it's one of those things where this isn't the game I would use to judge them. It's kind of like, would you judge a defense right after they played Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers? No, you wouldn't, because Aaron Rodgers tears up basically everyone. Okay. So it's would I would I be confident in them? It depends on the matchup. I'd start them next. I start them this week against the Cards if Blaine Gabbard is throwing the ball. Definitely. Oh yeah. 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 And maybe look at them in like fantasy playoffs against the Forty ers and the Jags. So yeah, streamable maybe. Well, you mentioned the Rams are going wild. Robert Woods obviously is a must start now, right? Have to? Have yep. to. Have to. Yep. Watkins has earned himself a pickup now. I mean, maybe not a start, but definitely on, you want him on your team? Definitely a speculative ad. Definitely is someone you want on your team just so other people don't have him because the big yeah. play potential is, is there. He was dropped by way too many people. I picked him up on a couple waiver wires. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, he got drafted early, didn't do much, got dropped, and now he's becoming fantasy relevant again. Albeit he's not getting a lot of work, but he is scoring. So you got to have well, him. People can't forget, Robert Woods was drafted to be a very good receiver. It just so happens that, like I said earlier, what they're doing on the Rams, they couldn't do on the Bills. And I, I don't know what the huge difference is, maybe with their playbooks, but Woods is the number one on that team. Watkins is their number three. And he's an okay number three for them, but he's number three with insane potential. All right. I don't think I'd play him this week at Minnesota. No. Ah, it could be a shootout. And if it could be a shootout, and if Minnesota's all over Woods in a cup, Watkins could see some openings there because he's not their number one receiver right now. And I still think Xavier Rhodes would be the one who's on Watkins. Yeah, well, I would, I would expect that too. I'm. Yeah, I'd have to say he would be because Watkins is still probably the best receiver on that team. I agree. He is the best receiver on that team. He's just being crazy underutilized, which sucks. But, <laughs> they don't I need mean, to utilize him. Right, they exactly. They don't need the to use him. But that's why he still gets that number one corner coverage. Let's talk about the Patriots and Broncos real quick. The Patriots 41, Broncos 16, Brady Gronk, and a bunch of flexes. That's what I call this team. Uh, the only good, the really good thing, I guess, well, decently good, is that the four-headed committee is seems to be now a three-headed committee in the running back burkhead white Dion lewis gillisley was inactive so i don't know what i think he's done for uh burkhead is a must add i think because you need a piece of that offense at this point don't know who's going to get the most work it looks like it's leaning toward lewis in terms of rushing well if you notice the first set of downs or the first drive it was lewis lewis didn't perform burkhead so yeah and we hot hand I had considered Burkhead for the great debate this week, but I figured out of all the other guys on waivers we could pick, Burkhead was an automatic win. Yeah, yeah. Like, all of right. course it would be Burkhead. Even though you don't try to win the debate, that's how people who are listening see it. Oh, this this player won. So I think that's just how that one would have been viewed. So we decided yeah. to go a different route. But at the same time, Burkhead's a win, but I also think Burkhead is one of the riskier picks. Because right, he if, is. But if James Bur- White goes out in that first drive and kills it, James White's starting the rest of the game. Right, and but Burkhead, Burkhead or Austin Eckler. Oh, well, Burkhead. See? Exactly. Yeah. Well, that just that's just because Austin Eckler has no, real no, competition. I, I know exactly why. I'm just saying right. that's why Burkhead wasn't part of the debate. Who's because the other running back it, he would have been like, oh, for clear, you're going to pick up Burkhead. Who's, who's the other running back for the debate? Jamal Williams. I'd, I'd go Jamal Williams. He has less of a committee to fight. Right now. Yeah, right now. That's what I'm, I'm talking about like, for the next week or two, or potentially end of the season, depending on how bad Ty's ribs are, because he's already had rib, in- rib injuries. Yeah, I do think a lot of people would have gone with Burkhead, though. Yeah, I can see that. All right. So, I mean, it's very unlikely you get a piece of this Patriots offense at this point in the season. If Burkhead's out there, I think you got to grab him. Uh, maybe try to get Hogan in a trade. I don't know when he's coming back. That's something you're going to have to look at. But the end of the season schedule is looking pretty good for them. Raiders, Dolphins, Bills, Dolphins, Steelers, Bills. 
So get a piece of that offense if you can, I think. The Broncos, finally, wrap it up with the Broncos. Dumb mistakes on special teams, penalties, all kind of stuff. Not a good game. The no-fly zone defense, I'm not scared of it anymore. They got killed by Wentz. They got killed by Brady. Are you feeling okay about starting your quarterbacks now against the Broncos defense? No. No, I still don't feel okay about that. Yeah, I mean, you, you got you got beat by, Chris doesn't agree, but arguably the best quarterback to ever play football in Brady, and you got beat by Carson Wentz, who's kind of like Jared Goff this year, just tearing up everyone, and we kind of expected it because they're a high-octane team, but it looks like Denver is still doing well against above average and lower teams. All right. But when you're talking about like the best scoring teams this year, which the Eagles kind of are, they get beat. So that's a real tasty playoff matchup for that defense because they got the Jets, the Colts, and the Redskins. So Yeah, I'd be fine with starting them Okay, then. All right. Uh, Brock Osweiler, 221 yards, touchdown and interception. Emmanuel Sanders had a great game, 137 yards, 6 out of 11 uh, for his targets and catches there. Demarius Thomas got in the end zone, but only 44 yards. But I think you got to start either one of these guys. You feel okay with them, even with Brock back there. Uh, I'm concerned about C.J. Anderson and Jamal Charles and Booker being involved in a three-headed committee. They all kind of got the same amount of carries, 10, 8, and 8, respectively. So what do I do with these guys? I feel like you keep starting C.J. and you keep starting Charles. I think Booker's the weakest of the backs right now. Okay. What do you mean um, keep starting Charles? Who is starting him? If some dude, there, there's deep, there's deep leaks. If you're starting Charles as a flex, I completely understand it. He does get end zone work. Booker is the, probably of the running backs the one I wouldn't trust. So let me rephrase that. If you're starting Charles because you need to, I would keep putting him in. Okay, that's a better way to put it. I, I agree would, with that. I wouldn't drop Charles. Yeah. But of of the three running backs in my ranking, it would go CJ Charles and then Booker a few pegs behind. I know they got all relatively equal work, but I think CJ and Charles this season are the better running backs. And Steve, we discussed the receivers last week. I told you they'd be fine. Yep. Keep rolling them out. Yep, definitely. Uh, and somebody on the Blitz on Sunday, I don't remember who it was, but they said they felt like DT was going to score this week. Don't know if it was you, Professor. Uh, I did. You did. So great call on that one. He did indeed do it. So Chris, did you steal Hoos's Crystal ball. Because <laughs> you've made some uh, some good calls this week, and I'm impressed. Yeah, really yeah I, f- I feel like on the Blitz, we actually did a really good job. Oh, we the, did. One, the one bad call would have been Powell, but nobody saw that one coming. No one. Yeah. But yeah, Diggs, Murray, um, Amir Abdullah, Demarius Thomas. Yeah, a lot of good calls this week. Yeah, a lot of good calls. If you guys haven't listened to the Sunday Morning Blitz, we do a show, a live show, about an hour, hour and a half or so before kickoff, we just take calls. We we answer your questions from Sleeperbot and Fantasy Life app, start sick questions. We try to get to all of them. I think we did over 100 questions this week, and um, yeah, we're pretty good at it. Yep. So tune in on Sunday morning. We get Sunday to every single question. Yeah, we do. We bust our butts, and then we, and then we scramble to set our lineups at 11.55. So. All right, that is it for the game recap. Is there any players that you guys have been thinking about this week or caught your attention that we didn't talk about might be worth a waiver ad or maybe as a trade target? Just open more. Oh, open mic right now. Taylor Gabriel. Jamal Williams and Austin Eckler. <laughs> Listen to the great debate. Yeah. Listen to the great debate. All right. I think we're done. That's it for the show today, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Head over to sleepwire.com for all our rankings. Come out Wednesday, our podcasts, and submit questions through the site. And also, please support our cause. Make a donation to Rob's Treatments for Chronic Lyme Disease. If we help you win a week or we give you some players that get you some points, put you into the fancy playoffs, man, help us out. Help us beat this chronic Lyme disease. And uh, any any amount of donation you can do will help. We appreciate it greatly. Rob appreciates it greatly. And the 12 champions of the Sleeper Wire are online all the time and are happy to help you. Just join the Sleeper Wire channel on the SleeperBot app and find us also on the Fantasy Life app. You can reach Professor Chris at Professor Chris. You can reach Max at Max SW. And you can reach me at SW Steve or at Sleeper Wire on both apps. You can also find us on Twitter at Sleepwire Show, Facebook at Sleepwire Show, and don't forget, like I said, tune into the Live Mail Sack Show Wednesday. We take your calls live, we take your questions from the apps, and we start about 7:30 p.m. Eastern. You can listen on the Sleepwire website. Just scroll down, find the Mixer Player on the homepage. That's Wednesday night at 7:30 live Mail Sack Show. Professor Chris, 
Max, thanks for being on the show. Good luck to you guys this week. Thank you. Peace. Fantasy Football Show will help you win your fantasy football championship. Sleeper Wire, Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern. Sleeper Wire on Dash Talk.